I know I'm I killed like, him, but I'm a Virgo. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm a Cancer, so like I can't drive. You know, <laughs> it's not my fault. I ran him over. <laughs> you know, it's like come on. Real quick, look up for me horoscope. Pisces born are known by their wis wisdom, but under the influence of Uranus, Pisces something. <laughs> That's what it says. That's the only time you're known from your wisdom is from your anus. Welcome to the Common Podcast, where we speak upon common sense and realize it really isn't that common. Guys, before I introduce today's guest for today, you already know the fee for today's podcast is to make sure to leave a like, comment, share with at least one person. Also, as you can tell, we have some merch. If you do want to get a hold of some of this merch, for now, go ahead and check out our social, Justin and I's, uh, to get a hold of some of this merch until we fully launch the website. So if there's something you want, go ahead and check it out. But for today's show... Accompanied with Justin and I, we have Ray. Ray, what's your last name? Luna. Ray Luna. So Ray Luna. I feel like I can make a King Luna. Oh yeah. All right, go ahead. Okay, so also hi by the way. Yeah. Hi guys. Welcome back to another episode. We're in the twenties already. We're in episode twenties. Oh, I thought you meant like age wise. I was no, like, yeah, oh, that's I'm, a, you're I'm not. About to head out, I was like, uh, oh, wait, weird. how old are you? You're about to head out. 29. You're 29. About to be 30. I'm just getting a little, oh, uh, a little clip. Nice. <laughs> I like this one. So, you're 29, about to hit 30, which is a great segue for what we are going to talk about today. Right. It, it might not be great for, you, for your ego. All right. He's going to be his first question How does it feel to be old? <laughs> Right? No, <laughs> no. no. Yeah. it might not be great for your ego, but it's going to be a great segue for today's conversation. And I asked you yesterday, we had a personal phone call and I asked you, what the heck do you do, Ray? Because I see you on social media and you're doing all these different kinds of things and I can't pinpoint what you actually do. And we talked a little bit about it, which we will get to on this podcast. But you mentioned your age and you mentioned how you feel like you have a young spirit, right? You feel like you're young. You feel young yeah, yeah. mentally, right? And you feel like I, even though my age physically says something, I'm still in the stage of I need to find my niche. I need to find what I need to do in life. And I love that about you because that takes a lot of bravery, right? Especially in the culture that we are living in down here it's tough, where, where we live. We're, we're constantly told, no, you need to, whether your parents are telling you, you need to go get a college education, get a traditional job, or you just need to bust your butt, leave, and go do something yeah. with yourself. Go get a CDL. Go get a CDL. <laughs> yes, that's very common down here. Uh, so I want you to elaborate on that, on this young spirit and how, what's your goal? What's What are you really trying to accomplish? Yeah, yeah. so leading up to... 2018, I was trying a bunch of different things. So um, I was in between jobs, and I, I hate being in that stage. Uh, kind of like a love hate a contradiction, mm -hmm. uh, but because it it stimulates my brain. I'm in a place where I'm not comfortable, and I think that's where we can be the most creative. When you're in that state of mind and you're not comfortable, that's when you kind of have a fire under your ass to try to make something happen try to get something going Stop. so it, it, things just start firing off like the pistons start working in your brain like what can i do what can i do what can i do fight or flight yeah and so you're just kind of looking around trying to get inspiration from a whole bunch of different things and um at the time i was trying to do a um like a little cleaning business just to do something on the side um because my wife worked in real estate well she still does now she's got a real estate license and she's been working for some family friends for a while. And so I would clean like the apartments and do make readies and stuff like that. So whenever old tenants move out, before new tenants move in, paint, patch the walls, all that kind of stuff. So I figured, okay, if I could do that, well then why don't I, instead of just working for one company, why don't I work for several and just have several under my belt, get accounts and start working for myself. So I, uh, I tried that for a little bit. Um, but things didn't really go as planned and I, I didn't love it. 
I, it was more like a like a chore. So that's when I decided to shift and I just wanted to do something else and uh, slowly found my way into woodworking. And then I started doing outdoor patio furniture sets and that I really liked. That kind of actually took off for me. Oh, and, really? uh, a small little income, 1200 bucks a month, 1500 bucks a month. It grew a little bit more and I could buy all my tools and stuff and started getting more and more and more. But uh, as of recently, um, I guess the word would be a, a ranch hand uh, at my buddy's ranch. <clears throat> they have the largest exotic uh, bird farm in Texas. Yeah. Quality for cool. pets. So they do all kinds of stuff. They do um, like little guinea pigs or, or guinea hogs, mini hogs, mini goats. Um, mini goats? Mini goats, yeah. Nigerian mini goats. How small are they? Uh, they're pretty they're tiny. Like, they're, they're like pretty small. mini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you compare it? Like, I'm thinking maybe like uh, something that's very short is a, a pot belly pig. That small or maybe a little bit bigger? Maybe a little bit bigger. Oh, that's cool. Just a little bit bigger. Yeah. I might want to. Like, have you seen like, all the, the trends for yoga? Like goat yoga? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, those so jokes. In, yeah. And, oh, yes, I have. Austin, yes. they yeah. call it goga. In Austin, okay, they have like a, a go go abbreviation for it. Yeah, well, so like, well, it like at least in Austin for this like one company, they uh, called their like uh, business Goga, okay, where you yeah. do yoga and these like baby or like mini goats and baby goats like yeah. climb all over your back while you're like in yoga poses. Yeah. I have seen that now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So like, I hate it's that it's I'm crazy. like. I'm like listening and I heard, I heard baby goats and I'm like, oh, oh. yeah, baby goats. <laughs> <laughs> That's the segment. Yeah, know, here we go. Cover. All right. Love here here go. We have our goat expert. Right. <laughs> right. I can only talk about goats for about 20 seconds and now we need to move on to the next topic. But I, I'm intrigued now. <laughs> no. How did that look? Okay, I can see from here. That's but good. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun. It's fun. Um, Birds mostly, man. They, they do all kinds of exotic birds. Is that something you're passionate about? Yeah, actually. Um, I'm, I'm loving learning the business. And, and you know, if, if, if you could do any kind of, if you could breed any animal, they would definitely be exotic birds, man. Because most ranchers and stuff, like I had a friend ask me the other day, how do, how do ranchers make money? And, it, and it's it's kind of hard. I can imagine. They, real, real quick, though. Know? You you said exotic birds, and mm -hmm. then only said like guinea pigs, guinea hogs, and then like goats. Yeah, well, they they don't do a lot of like stock animals. They mostly do birds. Yeah, they have okay. monkeys. Too. Well, so like, what type of like, what's well, like what exotic bird? Um, because... macaws, um, the scarlet, uh, what is scarlet macaws and cockatoos. Okay, that, stuff okay, like that, yeah. just okay, birds that you just like don't typically find because yeah. my my brain finally clicked and I was like exotic birds and all I remember was goats. So that was weird. <laughs> okay, anyway, brains. right? <laughs> I was like, do these, do these guinea pigs and goats just like get up and fly? <laughs> like what? <laughs> right? Just like running around and flying off. Like a goat is like coming down and just picks up a flying guinea pig and like yeah. Anyway, no. that's what I pictured in my brain for a second. Okay, anyway, sorry about yeah, that. We are <laughs> I wish after last show. Yeah, yeah. At, at the last show, he's like, I need a drink. He was heated. Oh, yeah. man. But anyways, I feel like you... I feel like you've had so many other jobs, too, right? Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. you skipped... I skipped a whole bunch. Um, yeah. And what else have I done? You, uh, how I met you. Yeah, through, yeah. through training. Yeah. Right? Yeah, fitness. Fitness, you... What was that called again? Flex Fitness. Boot Flex. Camp. Flex yeah. one these boot camp, yeah. yeah. And Carlos was working for you, yeah. and then he picked me up. Yeah. He's like, "Hey, bro, like you know, help me out, whatnot." And then y'all branched out. Didn't we branched out. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So that that is very memorable for me because yeah. that was very brave for me to yeah. do um, personally because I had never. Uh -huh. that, that's in a way you could say entrepreneurship, whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's your I first your breakout project out of the traditional job. Yeah. So, so yeah, we worked for you for a little bit and then you moved to Harlingen. We were just like, yeah, yeah we can we can't make that drive. Yeah. And then um Carlos and I one night got together, like, well, we're not gonna be able to do it anymore. It's like, well, we can do it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So that was exciting for us. But how did that work when you went to Harlingen? Did you keep doing that? No. Uh -huh. Um so I think that's probably the biggest project I've done because that was the most successful thing. That I did it for a couple of years. The fitness? Yeah. Um, everybody wants to get healthy dude it was just 
It was awesome. Uh, so I was I was getting married, and the year was 2011, and I wanted to get in shape for my wedding. So I had never really like joined the gym. I had, and then I just never went. I just paid for the memberships. Um, but then I actually started going, and then I started learning all this stuff, and I was like, okay, I, I'm, I kind of suck at this. I need to get better. So I started doing research on it, like, how do I get better? How do I get better? How do I get better? So I started doing my own research. This was before like YouTube channels were like all about it, you know? Yeah. And I really didn't know what was going on. And the only thing that I remember looking up was the Hodge twins. You guys Hodge Hodge twins. twins. And the only reason they came up was because my my forearms were like so jacked up uh from all the grip and stuff, and my wrists were hurting like crazy. And I was like, did I injure something? Okay. So I was looking up wrist pain and stuff. And, and they had one of their videos. And it was just hilarious. That They're was the hilarious. only fitness channel that I remember finding on YouTube yeah. at the time. They are very uh, foreign back then. Like, yeah, it yeah, it was out there. So I had to do old school, man. Go to the library and read and, and stuff yeah, online. Something that's, that excites me about that. Right? Like, like nitty gritty. Like, yeah. I feel like there's still stuff you're going to learn there that you still won't learn online. Yeah. Like, there's mm-hmm. just, and so I, I just progressed and progressed and progressed. And then um, I was looking for work because at the time I was working at Sears uh, selling appliances, refrigerators and stuff like that. So. Uh, I was looking for work. They were opening a Gold's Gym in the mall that I worked at in Harlingen. Okay. And um, it wasn't open yet. And I was like, well, let me see if I can get a job there. And the, it ended up procrastinating their their opening. So I just went and applied in Brownsville. And I thought, you know, well, I want to work in fitness. What, what better way to learn, right? So... Uh, I ended up applying for a sales position because that's what I already did with sales and I got it and for some reason or another they liked me and and they took me under their wing and I'm still good friends with the managers and stuff from that time and uh, I just fell in love with the industry man I fell in love with it so ever since 2012 I've been working for Gold's Gym worked for them for three years and then uh I moved to Florida, and that's where I got the inspiration to do my own thing. Cause in Florida there was like tons of stuff. It like people had their own hula hoop studios. It was it was crazy. Like <laughs> like it was like Zumba. Yeah. Right? But like just like hula hoop, and that was the fitness thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's crazy, man. Yeah. I man, I believe it. Yeah, people would try anything nowadays. Anything, and it was like, and the studios were packed. Damn. And I was like, man, like, like there was jump rope studios, there was hula hoop studios, <laughs> jumping jack studios. Yeah. I was, I was about. You said hula hoop studio. Yeah, yeah. I was about to make fun of that by saying, "What? Okay, so there's a jump rope studio now." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is, bro. Okay. <laughs> Miami's crazy. Miami oh, has yeah. like everything. I heard Miami's like shouldn't even be considered America. I heard it's so Bro, crazy out there. It's like it's a wild, wild east, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's craziness. I love living over there. It was cool. So in the process of you doing all of these jobs and like from jumping from job to job, was there any relationships ruined? Um was it was it frowned looked frowned upon from maybe your parents yeah. your wife how did your wife take this or because was there ever a time where you were very unstable maybe yes. the finances were yeah, that's that's exactly the word instability because yeah. you're going to run across that a lot yeah so the reason i moved from gold's gym to florida uh was because sales i moved from the the brownsville location to the hard engine location once they opened the gym finally opened and then i went over there um, but sales were just like, and I, I worked for corporate in Brownsville. And when I moved to Harlingen, um, I worked for a franchise. Yeah. So completely different yeah. setup. Mm-hmm. They're going to do their own thing Dang, the yeah. way they want it. And, and I went from like the highest, uh, or the, the lowest payout in corporate was the highest payout the other way around. Mm-hmm. So, so with- my income just... With all these jobs, were you intentionally looking for different jobs? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
because I was just kind of, I, I get bored. I get bored and I like I'm like fidgety and stuff and I I just once that little phase is over, three, four, five months, six months in, and just like I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't. Like I got I gotta move on. I gotta move. like this isn't for me. I've learned it. I think it's something like okay, I can say I'm good at it, but. I, I want to try something else. Yeah. I, I just get, I get bored. I get antsy. I get so yeah. much anxiety. So I think, I think something like that. And I, I'm relating to you in the sense of I've had quite a bit of jobs and yeah. they weren't intentional of me trying to look for different jobs. I just, I've, if I felt like, Hey, you know what? I'm not making enough money yeah. or we're about to move. I need to look for a job like senses like that. Like that. Yeah. I would, I would get a different job. Yeah. And it was always, the best thing in the entire world and the best job in the entire world up until like a month. And then I was like, this sucks. <laughs> this Do you think that's a worst. problem though? Like, so, no, I, no, I think, so what I'm, what I guess what I'm going with uh-huh. this is that I think people really enjoy. So like everybody spends eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours of their per like of their day mm-hmm. doing this one thing to make a living. Typically speaking, yes. like we're not talking yes. about the billionaires and all of that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the average person. So the fact that you are doing everything, it becomes monotonous. Nobody likes monotonous. Like mm-hmm. nobody, nobody likes being caught. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's people that like routine, mm-hmm. but I guess where I'm going with this is, do you think, and the only reason I can ask this question this way is because I recognize that you said you get bored and things like that. Yeah. I was looking for freedom and uh excitement yeah in careers uh-huh. and, and i think i never found it yeah. and i don't honestly i i hope so but i honestly don't think i ever will mm. i think and so what i'm saying is do you think as someone who's like man this is this is really boring you know i just i and and we talked about earlier how you would like love to do the dirty the dirty jobs things and like yeah, experience. Yeah. I think that you're more of a personality of a personality type of like you know what, I can have the same job every day, but mm-hmm. like every other day when I get off, I'm gonna do something adventurous, and that's where you find your happiness, that's, not in the job. That's itself. what I was gonna talk about. Yeah. So like I I want to ask you, do you think that you're finding your identity, your happiness, and your like lack of boredom from the job? Or like, are you trying to make steps? So like you said that you were super into fitness, like, or like yeah, yeah. that you were into fitness at one point in time, like, like I, it, it just sounds like, like uh-huh. that you're looking for the happiness purpose and or, the purpose yeah. and, purpose. and like the, <clears throat> well, I just, I just get bored. Yeah, like, yeah. and honestly, like everyone that I've ever known and spoken to, everyone hates their jobs or everyone at some point, like even if they love their jobs, go through terms and yeah. of like, man, this is boring or man, this sucks or whatever. And they get right back up and they get re-motivated or re-dedicated. like uh-huh. dedicated. Yeah. Do you think that you're looking for that in the wrong reasons? Or do you uh, think that maybe you're just, your brain is just looking for... Yeah, no, I mean, because I, 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 I've thought about it every which way too. You know, I've, I've tried to like take it apart and analyze it. You know, I've asked myself the same questions. And what am I doing that for? Is mm-hmm. it because I'm bored? Is it because I'm just not finding fulfillment in what it is that I'm doing? Uh, but Or is it circumstantial? Which to me would be the worst idea or the worst reason to do it because now you're just being led by everything and you're right, not really yeah, exactly. doing it You're not being disciplined. Right, sure. yes. Exactly, sure. or, or with discipline. Uh, but no, every move I made was because I sincerely wanted something different. Right. So you know, when I moved out, when I moved from Harlingen to to um, Miami, it was to go do door to door sales. Mm-hmm. That in itself, I already knew was temporary. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and and it was funny though because my manager at the gym was the one who who said let's let's ditch and let's go do this. So that was to me that was crazy, and I was like, was that exciting for you? Oh, though? Oh, dude, it was like adrenaline pumping oh, and man. talking with people you know, recruiters and stuff over the phone, late nights, trying to figure out like what my next move is going to be. And, uh, yeah, my heart. How, how long did that last though, before that went away? Um, like the excitement. Yeah. The excitement, the adrenaline and all of that. Like how long, like, did it ever go away? No, it never went away. So then, so then like why leave? Um, cause well, I was not doing the amount of sales that I was before. Okay. So for me, it was kind of hard. And 
at the time we had only I had only been married like six months mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something different and I wanted to go experience something different. So my wife's like, hey, Mike's Mike, my manager at the time, he's offering you this thing. Let's just go try out Florida for a year. Mm -hmm. and if we don't like it, we can always come back. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. Have so, you ever tried looking for so like instead of like putting I don't uh, mm -hmm. it, all the years that you've been working, have you ever tried not putting your energy into working and being like, you know what, this is a very good steady paycheck. I've, I've, I've laid a foundation for home. Let me put my energy in like finding what gets my adrenaline pumping and my lack of boredom and outside of work and like, let me find a hobby. Let me find something that will. That's actually where I am now, actually. Okay, okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I was going to speak on, too, because I've been with my company uh -huh. for over eight and a half years. Wow, man. Yeah. That's and crazy. so I've been in ruts where I'm just like, man, this is so repetitive. But what has always got me out of it, first of all, it's. I get paid pretty well. Yeah. So like to, for me to leave this job, it keeps it, you there. Right? Yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. it's a struggle. So what I've found for me how to cope with that is what can I do outside of the job on my off time to really to like get that stimulation. Yeah, the really because excitement. I guarantee you you'll find a job even if it pays the same. And let's say you're there for two years, you're gonna go back into the exact same mindset. Exactly. So, so like, which is why the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. it came to life like i need something yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and this yeah. is this and is for, it for me, me that had always been music mm. but for some reason or another i just i didn't have i guess the right people to to help me keep that going mm. so i and then plus once i got married like i just kind of i left old acquaintances and i moved to a different city and stuff so that kind of just went sure. out the window um which now I'm getting back into that, you know, but at the time, uh, yeah, I just wanted to try something different, something exciting. And, and I knew it was only going to be temporary, but if anyone ever has a chance to go and do door to door sales, uh, it's crazy. And I don't suggest you do it in the city that you live in. I suggest, <laughs> I suggest you do the whole experience and you move because you're forced to, to make something happen for yourself. Yeah. So the, the, the company I went with was Vivint. They do home alarms, security, home automation, all mm -hmm. the smart home kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um, and now they're doing solar and all this stuff. But, but uh, yeah, man, you go out there, they provide uh, transportation for you. Um, AKA, you get dropped off and they pick you up. <laughs> uh, they give you housing, though. You, so you have okay. a pretty sweet apartment. They furnish it for you. Uh, you just buy your own groceries. So here, here's a funny thing that you brought that up. Uh -huh. So the job that I had before moving down, I worked at an apartment complex. I was a senior leasing consultant. Okay. I All I did was deal with like legal paperwork, dealing with prospects and try to get like the rooms rented, mm -hmm. which we were in a very, very great location. So 99% of the time, we just had a wait list. And I'll, I'll, I didn't oh, really have to do yeah. anything. <laughs> I got free rent. Oh. And most of the time, three or four times a month when notices or eviction notices had to go out, it would be a beautiful day outside. And I got to drive around with 60, 70 envelopes to deliver to the comp, the, the campus. 60? Well, the, uh, so the apartment complex that we lived at uh, had 430 apartments. Shoot. So all I would, so what my privilege was, and we had a golf course that surrounded the thing. So I would drive through the like golf course exactly. around <laughs> and it would be a beautiful day. And I was spending two, three hours of my work day driving around in a golf cart. Oh, just okay. like, like, and at some point I got to where I was like, this is mentally unhealthy. This is too routine or like too routine for me. Mm -hmm. I need change. And I, mind you, I was not doing anything outside of my work. I was not trying to do anything. So I, had led no to, I had no stimulus. I yeah. it got to where it was like, no, I don't want to get in the golf cart. I want to like sit here and play games on my laptop. Like I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Like it just it got to where it was so bad, and then I like started to have like, uh, real heated conversations with my manager because there's just the difficult situations. But anyway, long story short, I moved down here because I'm like South Padre. I'm gonna make the move and have like a different easy laid back job do something different i've never done anything like this before and then i moved down and i do it and i'm like 
actually my last job in Arkansas was a really nice setup. <laughs> and I took it for granted. And also, I was looking for happiness in all the wrong place. Like, yeah. I was thinking, like, the job and the location was going to bring me, like, the excitement, uh-huh. all of that. And what I've come to know, because I've worked for a hospital. I've worked uh, as a home care aide where I, like, had to take care of someone and, like, all of that. Because that's all I've known. My mom does that. And I helped her do it growing up. And then I did uh, – I've worked at uh, – uh, there's a two pla- – uh, yeah, a place on uh, SPI that I did – and then like little, I've done maintenance. I've done uh, like lawn care, things like that for my college because we had to work on campus. I've done student housing. I've done like a bunch of different types of jobs. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed that every single time, like minimum one month, but about three or four months in, mm-hmm. I hate what I'm doing. Mm. And I've recognized for myself that there's a pattern. Yeah. And it's because I'm not taking the time for myself to like work on me. myself. Yeah. And like, Hey, you know what? Things that I really enjoy doing that I stopped doing because I once I I'll do it when I'm like the first two months. I'm like I'm living I'm living my life. I'm living my top best life. Yeah. I'm working at a new job. I'm working out. I'm, I'm running. Doing I'm doing everything. And then as soon as I get caught, and I'm like, man, this sucks. I stop working out. I stop doing everything. I stop eating right. And then that just it goes downhill from there. Do you think we're not? Do you think maybe we're looking for growth, not change? That's what yeah. I think it is. I think we're looking more for growth because if there's still sure, growth yeah. within the company, we have a goal, yeah. right? And let's say we meet the top of whatever that company has to offer. Sure. But if we're still growing within other aspects of our life, I feel like we'd be fine. Don't you think? Cause that's what I try to do yeah. to cope because sure. I'm telling you, when I tell you, when I'm on the brink of like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's like, I need to find something. Yeah. Like I need to find something. And sometimes I will even go within. I was like, well, the experience that I'm gaining, you know, the, within the process that I can grow from that. And that helps me just a little I bit. Would, I would even argue that it's not even maybe growth or change, but it's the fact that like, the the brain and the human body is meant to like make it easy as possible for you to live so if your brain is like i'm being challenged your first thought because there's people that like go through the grind and things like that but they have to get through the first thought of like i need to get out and i need to go and do something and i and so i think that like i can say from personal experiences uh i don't think that it's growth or change i think it's having that thought end of like I'm bored. I hate this. I need to look for that excitement. And yeah. like, and I, I think that everyone can get that. Cause I, I don't think that you and I, or even you are the only ones that have this problem. Oh yeah. No. I think Definitely that I, I really, really believe that if we take the extra two, three hours a day, even outside of work, even if the job sucks to do something that we eventually find that we absolutely love, mm-hmm. I think that, and I'm still looking for it, yeah. but like doing the podcast, and I've started like sand volleyball and I've started to make myself like super busy. I've noticed like, oh, my job's not bad. It's not terrible. And my yeah. brain is starting to shift. And so yeah. I'm saying, do, so like, do you think that yeah. that even before that, like, let's say you're not in the situation that you're in. Uh-huh. Would you say that you you move around a lot because you're searching for that excitement and just want that continued excitement? And it's maybe like a drug to you. It could be. Um because now that you now that you, you mentioned that whenever I would start to get bored, it was because the only thing I was doing outside of work was just partying. I was, yeah. I was 21, 22. Yeah. And it was just have everybody over and just drink all night. And then... And it's fun for a day or two. Rinse and repeat, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. fun I for think, a day or two. Yeah. But after like the second day, you're like, oh, where's my <laughs> I think life? It goes... I think it can go... Based off of personalities, I think some people they they yearn for that stability. Yeah. Like they want that. They don't like change. Uh-huh. I've really feel like my wife is like that. She would much rather keep one job and just learn that. And if she's good at it, she can be, she'll be able to stay on that. Yeah. Um. And then I do think that there are some people that they need that growth. They need that change. And then what what you had mentioned as well. Um. But what was I gonna say about um outside hobbies? There was something I was gonna say. Well, think about that real quick. Yeah, go ahead. So, like, I, I'm i all for the growth. But to me, growth is like, okay, I'm going into business. So, I'll, like, do sales. And then, oh, okay, like, now I need something different. I know about sales. Let me go into merchandising. 
let me go now okay now let me go into marketing now let me go into retail let me go like you know well that's change it's not growth so what well, i like mean, if you're growth like i'm saying like if you're if you're you have to be more well-rounded well-rounded and like growth and like so like like if i'm if i'm gonna have a goal to have growth to me growing in something is being like here's this broad subject and i'm going to learn every single thing that there possibly is to know about the subject and then grow to where i can not only have the stability but i'm going to know everything about that like to me where it starts to get a little fishy is when you rely is is when people are like yeah i mowed i mowed i mowed lawns and then i also sold t-shirts and then I also became a bartender. Like to me, that's not growth. You're yeah. searching. You're, like yeah, they're yeah. To me, you're not just like trying to grow and experience everything in life and know everything. Uh -huh. To me, now it's a concept of like, okay, you're looking for something. Yeah. yeah. Which is where I think I fall in that category. Okay. Because well, at the time, because I was wanting to learn everything. I didn't yeah. know what was out there, you know? Yeah, sure. So I don't take this personal, no, no, but yeah. like there's a saying that goes um a jack of all trades but master of none that's what i was just saying yeah. yeah yeah so like that can be dangerous too because yeah. yeah you know a lot of things but you're not good at them yeah exactly you know what i mean but then at the same time you also think about some of the best ceos in the world they're not master engineers oh, right yeah, sure yeah they yeah. hire master engineers. right yeah. absolutely yeah you yeah know, yeah they, they but they have a broad spectrum of like okay you need to know how it all works so like works. just like i said like have a well -rounded i'm gonna have experience and yeah then so like your key people in those positions. exactly so like i'm choosing to be a businessman i'm gonna learn the logistics of every mm, single possible thing yeah. working my way up and growing and at least work try to work in every single department up until i can become a ceo or have the money to build a business mm -hmm. yeah. to me that is very different yeah, that's... But that sets out from the beginning with intention. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You have to know how yeah. early on yeah, you have to do see. it on purpose. Yeah. I don't know a lot of people playing that, that can do no, that. Well, and yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying like even like, like let's say a 45-year-old said, okay, now I've learned that I've been searching for this and I'm I'm not really getting great at everything. I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. Okay, I've been able to experience it and I've been looking for everything in the wrong places. But now I know, like, you know what? I want to stick to one job. Let me choose the topic. And now let me do all the million laser types focus. of jobs with laser focus. Yeah. I'm saying, like, intention, that's fine. I think a lot of it has to do with, like, growing and going through the circumstances yeah. of, like, oh, okay, well, I'm doing everything. And then now you said, mm -hmm. now you're saying, like, oh, well, this isn't me so much anymore because you're finding your your purpose. Or yeah, or, yeah, or you're, like, your, your flow. You're yeah. finding it. You're, like, okay, I'm grabbing onto it. Um, so I think it's super important that you're like, oh, yeah. okay, well, this is something I, I think it's healthy, but I also think that there's a lot of like, I, there's two sides of this coin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah like, sure. it's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and where you were heading to like a corporate entrepreneurship site, like, mm -hmm. I think that that insight or that site has to come early, like the way you said, yeah. Yeah, because okay. like, if you go into a job and then you're just like, kind of just going through like whatever, but if you go into it. Like how you said, trying to learn all the logistics, you might not even be the best person at it. Right. But if you try to tear it apart, learn everything about it, put it back together. I'm done with this. Okay. Let me tear this apart. Put it back together. I'm done with this. Now I know what to search for when I need to hire somebody for this, this, yes. this, and this. And now I don't even have to do anything. Right. My people do it. For right. Me. But that's why I'm saying what's so dangerous about the other factor is that people will get excited and be like, hey, I have this, I have this new job. Let me tear this apart and learn about it. It's not quite done, and I don't quite know. So you know what? I'm going to go learn about something else. And, and, and it's in a completely yeah. different field. Yeah. Like You're like, wait, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> it, it, now it, you know how to it, fix a lawnmower, it, but now you're like trying to blow up a bouncy house? Like, what? <laughs> what? And I get it. It's like same coin, different size. Yeah. And like one way is intentional. The other is by mistake. Yeah. Like being led astray by whatever yeah. way is blown. Like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. yeah. And it's... The hardest thing about that is going to be the patience to mm. do that from the very beginning. Yeah, and that's where I agree with you. And, and it has to be intense be because intent. even yeah. if you're not good at it and even though you're frustrated with no, it. I agree. Yeah, you have. Yeah. If you ask someone, what have you do, been doing the last couple of years? Well, I'm trying different things. But if you, you know, did they try different things on purpose? Or were they trying different things because you, that they were just, they didn't know what's going exactly. on. Are like you trying, I'm trying to be a coach. So yeah. like I started off in PE. 
and like learn to like how to actually like talk to kids and work with kids and then oh i'm now a middle school coach and we have a bigger class or whatever trying different things of like i'm still in the same field within 10 yeah. years and i'm now finally a coach like, yeah. that, are you trying different things or are different things trying yeah. you and i did that experiment i before i even had my boot camp so okay. what i did was there was when i worked at, at at the gym in brownsville uh this this young girl had come in she was in high school and she wanted to have a membership but it, legal our legal department we cannot sell to a minor yeah they need to have a, a, their a guardian, guardian yes their parent co-sign for them, whatever give consent so I couldn't, I, and she would come in all the time, try to get free passes to go. And that was just her favorite gym. And she wanted to go to that gym and I would, I would let her in, I would let her in. And uh, by the way, guys, his address, <laughs> FBI, <laughs> FBI, his address. <laughs> so, just have it pop up on the screen. <laughs> just like scroll. It's like, like, subscribe. <laughs> address. <laughs> At least you can find him here. <laughs> Let hit me for all the, the free passes I give out. Oh, shoot. Oh. But uh, so I, I kept in touch with her throughout the years and we stayed friends. And um, she, she started learning kinesiology. Mm. And by the time I knew it, she had already graduated college and stuff and i was like wow like i saw this young kid grow up yeah and uh and she reached out to me because she knew I, I was working for a gym at one point and by the time she reached out to me i was in the start of trying to get my boot camp going okay I just moved back from florida and she was like would well, you have any work like I'd, I'd love to go and work for you and I, you know i didn't have work that she could do where i could pay her mm -hmm. so i told her you know what i would rather you learn and get paid, but not on my dime. Got you. Go over here. And yeah. so I sent her to that gym and she was there for like a year working as a personal trainer. And it for like the whole year I was starting up my thing and I completely forgot about her. <laughs> but I knew one day she's going to get tired of it and she's not going to like the structure of that. And uh -huh. she's going to be like, screw this. I could do it on my own. Mm. and that's exactly what happened and so a year goes by by that time i already have my studio she calls me and uh i was like i think you're ready so like come on by and then that's when we started hitting the parks and doing yeah. that kind of stuff yeah that's cool yeah and super awesome. i got to work with her for a little bit and that's super awesome. now she's a teacher so okay yeah, Wait, what? Totally, totally, totally <laughs> segue, but, uh, now she's a lawyer yeah. <laughs> All right. she was a great like total great personal trainer now she like races kangaroos. <laughs> How do you like that? Story? Right. Like, wait, whoa, 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 hold on. Now we're like... expected. <laughs> I, no, wait, what? But it was a cool okay. experience. Yeah. Like, like, I, I remember <laughs> placing that, that little gem. Okay, cool. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of changing the topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I think for people to truly um be happy is to find what they're going to fall in love to do and it might not be entrepreneurship it might not be bouncing from job to job to job to job mm -hmm. i know someone that i went to school with um i mean i didn't go to middle school with him but you probably know Meddy. Meddy, eddie he went on the squad this oh was... eddie yeah eddie what grabs that same anyways that helps. his name his name <laughs> his, name, is, his name doesn't really matter he knew exactly what he wanted to do from middle school that's awesome. You know what I mean? Imagine that knowing exactly what you're going to do. A lot of people that and then he went out and he did it. And he never changed what he wanted to do. I know a couple people in high school that did that. That is awesome. I envy you know, people like know, that. I don't, I, well, here I am making fun of you. I don't know the dude's last name. Oh, Mario. That helps. Mario. <laughs> all he ever, all, <laughs> Mario right. down here? Really? Right. <laughs> well, you said Eddie. <laughs> true <laughs> yeah no that's why i said this is going both ways right now no like he so like all the like since i've known him since freshman year high school he would like always like walk around like a cop and have oh like yes I, yeah he goes you know to my exactly gym. who he goes i'm my talking gym. about okay yeah, we message from dude time time. he would always talk about it and everybody would be like oh, dude, shut up. like you're acting the part and you're being super like whatever 
Dude, I I saw him. I saw like a post that he did a few years ago where he's like actually doing it. I was like, dude, good for him, dude. Yeah, like that's fantastic. If you don't know him, he seems obnoxious. Well, no, but he's not. He knows no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he no, knows no, exactly no. what yeah, he no. wants, and he's very kid. passionate about yeah, it. I, yeah, exactly. I remember the kid. Yeah, no, I remember him for sure. And that's that's. Uh, I mean, I was never like really close personal friends with him. Me but neither. when he spoke, he spoke. He spoke with like passion yeah but at the time it was like cheesy cheesy yeah. corny <laughs> this guy's which here stuff. i am i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna do for my life and he was like to get you yeah for well, sure. no, but like i mean if you really really think about it it really was just like it, it's as if i now as an adult became super passionate about something and then i made it happen everyone would respect the fact that i became passionate about it and made it happen because i was an adult but the yeah. fact that you have a 14 year old kid Walking up like, oh, you know, I'm gonna yeah. make it happen. Everybody like it was turned into a joke. Now looking back, I have more respect for a 14 year old that <laughs> yes. has that type of mentality yeah. than if a 25 year old would yeah. be like, you know what? No, I'm gonna do this. He's probably gonna come and arrest us all right, right. now. Right? <laughs> Don't. By the way, his remember his address. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, definitely, and especially like that, like a cop. I yeah. mean, if you think about it from elementary, what do you want to be? Fireman, cop. My goal, my my dream was to be a detective in New York. I've heard that was that before. my dream. Yeah, that was from my dream. someone else. You you heard it from someone else that that's what I wanted. To do? No, no, no. Oh, I was that, like, that's, that's what weird. I always wanted, wanted to do uh, local digital media search. No, I was like, local. I was like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I've always wanted to milk a cow. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Cool. Did you guys ever get? Um, and I remember this specifically uh, in middle school, right before going to high school. Did you guys get a book? with all the different types of jobs that there could there, there would be no 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 what we did funny story it's gonna take six, 60 seconds Go for it. what we I did instead time. of a book wait right no instead of a book what we did i don't, I don't know what y'all we did a a job test an occupational test to see what personality yeah. was best and like oh what, okay do like you want to know what I got? Test. Mind yeah. you, I didn't know that I was going to go up north and play ball and things like that. So, like, to me, I'm not going to be in the Valley for forever. you want to know the occupation that I got? Stripper. No. <laughs> no. That would have been that would have been better than my result. <laughs> Plumber. No. That would have been better than my result. That would have been better? I got, on my result, in the Valley, a professional snowboarder. <laughs> no. I swear to God. <laughs> That was my result. I think those tests are dangerous. Yeah, I yeah. I tried to go snowboard. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not really. <laughs> in the water, in the water with the I'm like going down the sand, dude, and like. <laughs> no. uh, I think those I think those tests are dangerous. Yeah, they that, set you up with false hope. Like a horoscope. Exactly. Oh, I hate those things. Yeah, man. same. Yeah, same. Oh, I'm glad we all agree. It's like you're gonna project to... me for failure? Like what? <laughs> Gemini? Right. Yeah. No, yeah. I feel like that is setting yourself up to own all the like own your handicaps. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm a I don't I don't even know much about it. I know I'm I a... killed him, but I'm a Virgo. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm a cancer, so like I can't drive, you know? <laughs> it's not my fault I ran him over. You know? <laughs> It's like, come on. I only stabbed him 42 times. It's not like I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> like, right? I don't, that thing annoys me. Yeah, no, I got you. Which the guess that we're going to have on next week is huge on that. So. No way. Yeah. And like against it or for it? For it. Oh, you're yeah. going to have so much fun. Yeah. Y'all thought I was crazy last night. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, I'm I know she's watching this. So um, we're looking forward to that. But anyways, yeah. I don't like anything that is going to kind of project your future, your destiny for you. I yeah, I don't like yeah, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, because it's, it's constantly changing. Yeah. And in, in a broad way, it's okay. Like in, in personalities, you can obviously tell. Like if you're an extrovert, obviously you, you're you better for be sales. I do. You can yeah, be a stripper yeah. as an extrovert. <laughs> as an introverted, as a stripper, you're going to be maybe like. Maybe not the best. You <laughs> probably what i what i will, the same strip. what i will say though is that i think that to every horoscope or myth or like you know to the the signs the zodiac signs i think that there's some sort of like evidence so like you know how they're like to a stereotype there's like some sort of truth i do i think that maybe 
that like I think you're playing trying to play devil's advocate right now. No, 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 no. Cut this off. <laughs> no, no, no. I really like honest to God, we are so off topic right now. It's okay. Okay. Let's anyway, get crazy. I do think that like maybe people born certain times of the year have maybe yeah or like or like a or i don't know crazy. a group of people who are raising their kids a certain way versus uh later I, that okay. year because of a cultural like okay. you know or like and i don't know there's people out there that are like well because of the moon the energy the vibe i don't know if i buy that I like if i buy that but like i think that maybe society and culture so like i do think that there is a trend and there's some sort of truth of like if you're born between january january and march and you're born through a group you make your those three months was very different through that year than it was so like they react and they gotcha. their parents taught them a certain way yeah. so like i i, I would say see. that i would agree with that i can see real quick look up for me horoscope and then h-o-r-o no i'm just kidding um <laughs> Or Zodiac Science. You could even... <laughs> okay, you could even look up Zodiac Science. He immediately Science. is like, this is the wrong site, guys. God. Okay, look up Zodiac Science. And I want you to read the first three things to me of every single Zodiac Sign. And this is what I want to prove. I think that with all these Zodiac Signs, you can probably relate some, some aspect yeah. in your life to every sense of them. Yeah. So they're so relatable, people are gonna be like, oh yeah, that's totally me. Do you mm. ever get up in the morning and sit down? And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Actually, I'm a Pisces. Are you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why do you know that? <laughs> well, my ex was big on it, so that's one of the reasons why I, I actually answer. this is super cringe. I like at some point before I believed in God, believed in that because I always thought there was a source to like why I behaved and reacted morally okay. and morally All to right. a certain way. Right. And so like, I didn't really like follow the, the, the horoscopes, but I was like, at least, Oh, there's an explanation to yeah. why got you. I'm reacting. This why way. I'm short tempered. Why, yeah. why I like make jokes about kangaroos all the time. Like, I don't you know. ever go out through your day and just eat. Yeah. All the time. Cancer. <laughs> oh, well then I'm, no, that okay. doesn't fit me. Go for it. Okay, for Aquarius, it says are they're born shy and quiet, but on the other hand, they can be energetic. However, in both cases, they're deep thinkers and highly intellectual. See, they're shy. They're shy. It is broad, but I will also say none of that was me. Like the as soon as you start off reading. I'm like, okay, well, that's not me. So the rest of it is, let's say, let, let's say the first like three or four words relates to somebody and they're like, oh, let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. But and the rest of it doesn't match the personality. I'm turned off to it. I'm like, okay, well, that's not me then. Yeah. I know it's broad, yeah. but also like. So, so what I said, the, you're, they're shy, but they can also be what? Energetic. Yeah. Is that you? No. Shy, what are you? Like shy, I'm a cancer. <laughs> you're a cancer. No, look up cancer. Look up cancer. Read it out loud. And we'll hear Roger's response. Yeah. I'll be honest. I mean, if if it if it hits right on, it's gonna hit. Right He's on. gonna be like, "All right, okay. well, I do eat. Can- <laughs> <laughs> I I do sleep. So no, my horoscope for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, cancers. They are very emotional and sensitive, and care deeply about matters of the family and their home. Cancer is sympathetic and attached to people. You they know that's not me. Spot. On. No, you <laughs> lied. Because we had a podcast where we talked about we really don't. See, we don't see our families We're as like often. Cover, man. Wait, what are you, Pisces? I'm a Pisces. Wait, hold on, hold on. Read it again, one more time. I, there's one point. You're too invested in this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cancers are very emotional and sensitive. I'm not and, emotional and, and sensitive. Care, uh, and care deeply know. about matters of the family and their home. Yeah, so um they care a lot about their families Look, and all that out of the two guys in this mug <laughs> which do you think is the more sensitive emotional one and i can give you i i know who these guys are <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay in my defense he came up with the design uh, hey but everybody including your wife in the comments put that was spot on Who's- as far as the look, like, no, she said that you're. That, that's my face on a cartoon. She said the. You're, you're, I don't recommend the mug, by the way, if you guys are gonna buy, because my face looks a little fat. Um, <laughs> but, no, what? But, but you, the, 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 
right there. You're, you're like not promoting our merch. Like, what's wrong with you? I don't recommend the mug. <laughs> you're gonna have a horrible experience. The white handle, <laughs> absolutely horrible. Drinking your coffee, <laughs> disgusting. It will shatter. Oh my. Dishwasher God. safe though. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyways. Yeah, your wife literally commented on my post on Facebook saying it's that the art. It was good. We oh, really okay. like. We'll the go art. with that. Okay. Yeah, uh, whatever emotional and sensitive guy. What, anyway, I keep reading. <laughs> what is yours? Pisces. Look at, look at him getting all the way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be mean to me, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Taurus goes taking my <laughs> Pisces. Should've, Pisces. Should have read mine for today. Actually, y'all can just leave now. Ah! <laughs> All right, Pis- he starts tearing up. All right, Pisces born are known by their wi- wisdom, but under the influence of Uranus, Pisces <laughs> some. <someday. laughs> That's what it says. That's the only time you're known from your wisdom is from your anus. <laughs> Oh, I said you're. Oh, reread that. Again. And. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude. We need to have Enrique on the show. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, I'm straight up crying right now. Go, go. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's good. And also says Pisces are in order, like they they want to catch all the attention. That's, That's him, is. yeah. Attention seeker. Oh. What was the first one though? The anus one. Because <laughs> I still don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> I have a lot of wisdom when it comes to my anus. Well, I'm, apparently, I'm, I'm guessing because the planetary alignment. Your, your anus. No, I, no, I think you straight what it up is? read it wrong. Like, you read it wrong. I can't read, okay, but like, look, it's... Anyway, weakness, fearful, overly trusting. I trust you way too much, Roger. Uh, sad, desire to escape reality, can be a victim or a martyr. Oh, oh wow. I have some things I need to work on. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, that's, that's obvious. All of our viewers can agree with that. Can we all agree that we all have things to work on now? Oh, yeah, but you in specific. <laughs> Not me, Okay, <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's see. Pisces are very friendly, so they often find themselves in a company of very different people. Dude, where did you read the Uranus? Look, I mean, okay, look. Okay, anyway. Uh, I think we can agree, though. It's pretty broad yeah. for okay, the most yeah. part. I agree. That was, wow. That's a long tangent. So kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> and anuses. <laughs> wow. That's the next podcast. <laughs> the anus of a kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're going. We're going to go on a tangent. Yeah. So, Ray, what is your next step? What is something that outside of the ranch yeah. that you that you're gonna try to um, piece together? I guess. Yeah, cultivate. Yeah, I, I guess. My next move. Because you know, um, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, the podcast I wanted to do for fun because okay. I felt like that would help me in my journey of finding more things out about people. So yeah. instead of me trying to go experience everything myself. Why don't I talk to the people who have experienced it and I could just kind of gain it through them instead of me, you know, and, and shorten that time. Frame. Yeah, I um, talked about that on the last podcast. I was yeah. like, one of my goals is to invite as many people as we can yeah. to if I can, let's say a lot of what you said, and I'm not saying this specifically, but let's say like everything that you said, majority of it was crap. Yeah. But if I can gain like one piece of knowledge from you yeah, like, and then yeah. from somebody else, like. I mean, imagine how much wisdom I'm going to be able to gain in 10 years. Which right? is the concept of being able to read so many pieces of literature, you know, mm. because now you're not learning from just your experience. Now you're learning from the experience of other people, culture, their yeah. lifetime, whatever they learn, they put it in writing. And now you're able to read that from the page and absorb that. You might not take everything on every single page. But there is going to be key points of information. Yeah, there's going to be things that stick out to you and be yeah, like, exactly. oh, like wait. I don't agree with everything Tony Robbins says. I don't agree right. with everything sure. Gary Vee says. I don't agree with everything, uh, you know, any other author or motivational speaker. But yeah. I do like certain little things 
that I use and I'll, I'll kind of take that for myself and I'll apply that in my life. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm great that you said that because a lot of people, they see that Tony Robbins because yeah. he's such an iconic person yeah. that he, to, to live life correctly, you have to live exactly in his mm -hmm. image, which is not. That, that is, he puts it's his like pants a borderline on, god at like this point everyone else yeah he's just another guy exactly so to to grab what you can from that person mm -hmm. take it with you and then it is you don't have to grab everything and just yeah, yeah. start dressing like him and be <laughs> seven seven foot tall like he is mm -hmm. he's, he's a tall gentleman and it looks like him <laughs> 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 tony tony uh, tony robbins is, is he's he's an icon man yeah. he's inspired so many of yeah. the upcoming yeah, yeah. motivational speakers entrepreneurs like that guy he had, he's I anointed bro books, man. he's anointed that guy books. yeah that guy has a mind like no one else but you know he was working for was it jim Rohn that he was working for i'm not sure um I don't know. I don't remember who he was. We're not talking about kangaroos, so I have no idea what you get. <laughs> That's not your, your field of expertise. Not, not. Goats. Goats, apparently, and kangaroos. <laughs> Flying goats. Flying goats. goats. Yeah. What I love so much about having a podcast is the fact that the other person is going to have insight and it's going to challenge your insight. Yeah. And it's really going to question you. And then you can educate that person in something that they didn't know. And then they're obviously going to educate you on something that you didn't know. But it can even alter what you even first thought was correct. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Now I'm questioning, is that really what I'm thinking now? Or that's what I've been super. Yeah. That's why I've always been super interested in like doing the podcast with you because <clears throat> interviewing people to me is the equivalency of like gaining knowledge from a book. Like you're gaining perspective. You're mm, gaining. Yeah. You are gaining knowledge. Whether it's yeah. you know you're not learning about 1980s, but you're understanding like trials and triumph like to me it's just as powerful sure yeah. you know so like i think that'll be a really 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 exciting good their thing experiences for you. yeah and, yeah what they go through for sure yeah for sure. so and, I, and i'm working on a bunch of other little things too like and and so i kind of the, the reason i did this segue into working with the <clears> ranch <throat> is because so i was doing woodworking and uh that was that was going you know somewhat decent for me um, and then I got a contract with my buddy's dad because they needed specifically like little, they have all these parrots, right? And the cages and stuff, but they needed the, what they call nest boxes built for the birds to go lay their eggs and stuff. So they needed this carefully constructed box. And so he said, I'm going to need like 150 of these. You think you can knock these out? I said, yeah, sure. No problem. So I had been working on that for him and then in going to go leave them and install them and stuff for them it's like other little things well i need help with a with a goat pen you think you can help me with that or i think we need a, a pig pen you think you can help me with that or and so it, now it just transitioned into a, well hey why don't you stick around and just kind of help us out here for a little yeah. bit and there's always something to do there's always work and i was like you know what yeah i'll try it out something totally different because i've always done digital stuff like media and sales and marketing and so this is like a whole new world for me. Yeah. And uh, I just figured like, I, I haven't done that, you know, so. I'm and, ex like, and exciting. Do you think that excitement's going to last? It's been a year. And oh. normally by now, I would have said, man, this ain't for me. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> every day I wake up and I was telling them, my goal in life is to wake up without an alarm clock. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been working on something or been anticipating so something? So excited. You don't, you wake up before your phone goes off. Yeah. You, you're just, you can't even sleep at night. You're just ready to go. Yeah. Or if you can fall asleep, you wake up with adrenaline and you're like, oh, it's time to go. Eric Thomas. <clears throat> yeah. Eric Thomas. No. 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 Motivational no. speaker. Uh, maybe I've, I'm pretty sure I've heard some of his uh, Yeah. He, he talks about his, one of his biggest sayings is no alarm clock needed. Uh-huh. So like Pisces too. <laughs> 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 yeah. So like he, his grind wakes him up is what he says. Yeah. 4 a.m. every single day. Passion. Just you know, it's, a, uh, it's what Mark Wahlberg does. Really? He wakes up at four, works, works out. out for like three or four hours, has his meal. Shoot. And then like if he's working on a project, does nothing but that for four hours and then hangs out with the kids for two, three and then has his last meal and then goes to bed at like 
seven. That guy's intense because yeah. he has like he's blowing up too. Like he has now a uh, fast food chain, right? Yeah. Well, his and, brother does. Oh, it's well, not him. Well, he's part of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he like helps. is he like a co-founder or something? Yeah, like he helped. Like uh, I'm assuming financially. Market, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, okay, like, cool. Yeah. I thought it was it's him. A, his brother is like the head chef and like started up the company. Mm. Has, Mark Wahlberg. The show. It's like the producer to a movie. Like you yeah. helped produce the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Even like uh, like Dwayne Johnson too. Yeah. He, oh yeah, that guy. He works out Bro. twice before people even wake up at eight o'clock. He has two workouts before the day starts. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Two he, workouts. He has his like fasted cardio. Then breakfast, so he's fueled. So go push weight around at the gym. Yeah, and then he's ready. Then no. by the sun, by I the played sand volleyball yesterday, and I can't move today. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna, and, then, and then you want me to wake up at four and have two workouts before eight? <laughs> no, I'll I'll that's eat awesome. at eight after two workouts, and then I will be in bed the rest of the day. Yeah, like no. that's crazy. And what's funny is like, like I had been, like I gave up on the whole fitness thing, and I and I gained a bunch of weight. And, and to me, that was like the most like uh, downer moment in my life was that like, man, I really let it get so it's far tough, out yeah. of hand, knowing what I know, mm. being the guy that was supposed to be training the fitness other guy. people. Yeah. And, and I just totally threw everything out the window. But I was just so frustrated with the lifestyle of, of, of withholding things for myself because I, maybe I wasn't doing it the right way or I didn't find the right combination for myself. Yeah. And so I was just super intense, super strict with everything. Plus owning the studio, I was going to bed at midnight, waking up at 4 a.m. But again, that passion, that adrenaline, but you can only do so much. Yeah. Eventually you're going to burn out. Yeah. And I just pushed it way hard. And then that's when I started biting off more than I can chew. That Mm -hmm. was my downfall. Mm. was that i wasn't happy with just the studio now i wanted other locations because i saw other people moving in and i was like no i gotta grab that before somebody else does and that was greed so that was definitely a downfall yeah. on my part. and i was like okay i gotta get brownsville i gotta grab harlingen i gotta grab San Benito. and and trying to spread myself so thin when i'm only one dude i kind of like half-assing everything yeah do nothing right and all my funding gets spread out from the thing that's working mm. pushed out into other things that are failing and now i'm just constantly pumping out having to pay for these failures or these lessons yeah, right I got you <clears throat> until it got to a point where mm-hmm. i couldn't do it anymore and my marriage was suffering because of it um and i just got to a point where i was just like okay I'm, am i going to keep putting my wife through this that instability out of something that was supposed to be stable mm. and i just said you know mm. what I, i'm gonna take a year off i have a little bit saved up and i'm just gonna think about what i want to do next and i took a year off and i and at the time i was training for a show i had lost like 50 pounds and and i, I was like on it and and i was still super far away from being like show ready but to me Having that intention is what put the fire under me to be able to do as much progress as I did. Yeah, yeah. J- just to be more specific, what uh, let the listeners know what you mean by show. Uh, bodybuilding show. Yeah, I, I knew that, but yeah. I just wanted them yeah. to. Uh, and that was the last time that I, I, didn't, I never signed up for it or anything. I was tra- One of my clients was signed up for the show, but I was training with her. So I was training as if. Yeah, and, so and, that you can sign up. Yeah, but I I honestly had that mental prep in my mind. If I am show ready, heck yeah, I'm going to do it. You know, For sure. I had always wanted to do that. That was the last time I saw that much progress. When I started working here at my buddy's ranch, it's been like maybe nine months since I was like really hitting it hard, waking up every day, uh, doing extra little things that I don't have to do just to get some cardio in. Yeah. And I've already lost 55 pounds. Just doing that. Nice. From 325, I'm at 270 right now. Nice. So that was the last time that I felt good. And now I'm feeling good again. So that's why I'm saying right keep, now, keep I have, I'm just going to keep it going. Yeah. I, I'm getting all the fulfillment I want from this job. Yeah, so nice. I, I think I'm, I'm pretty much in here for the long time. That's awesome. You know? That's good. Awesome. And there's that's a good. future in that's it for me too. Because right. You know, if, if he decides to go big with it and I help him grow and incentives for commissions and stuff like that, 
that can help me too. For sure. Um, so yeah, and then plus now it's just trying to figure out, okay, now I have to start weeding out time for me for the extra stuff. Gotcha. Because right now it's 12, 14 hour days. Mm. Um, and so now I'm just like, okay, I, I'm, I'm in it. I dove right in. I'm learning it. I love it. All right, now let's start trimming a little bit back. And so I can start regaining me. And now I can have time for podcasts. Now I have time to go for sure. play at, at Mel's on Friday or whatever, make mm-hmm. a couple hundred bucks playing, you know, little stuff like that. That stuff brings me the extra fulfillment. Now I'm just layering it on top. Again. That's good. Yeah. I, I actually competed in a show too. I have yeah, the, man. So, I don't know if you remember yeah, that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I lost 70 pounds for that show. That's insane, dude. Yeah. Yeah. One first, what can I say? <laughs> Just kidding. I, I got third. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude. Top five. Man. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um I've uh I've ridden a horse once. <laughs> Have you ridden a kangaroo? Or a baby goat. <laughs> you can ride our baby goats. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Really? No. no. Oh, I was gonna be like, do you, you ride my fat you? ass on one of those baby goats? Are you kidding me? God. I mean, I was just gonna hold it up. Okay. You know, yeah. This just in, <laughs> a random stranger, fat, <laughs> crushes, goat. crushes baby goat. Yeah. For I, some reason, the goat had wings, though. I don't know. <laughs> I think, um, I think, I mean, it kind of sounds weird, me giving you advice. I guess just don't like add things that are going to get in the way instead yeah. of help and fulfill you. Because yeah, yeah. then it might happen again where it's going to like, That's you're going to waste your energy yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. Um, for sure. Uh, what I really love about your lifestyle is, is that you're building a bunch of bridges. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you have connections everywhere. Ah, uh, man. Anybody you need to know about anything. Relationships is it. huge, yeah. bro. Relationships yeah. are huge. Never burn a bridge, man. Even if things aren't going right, yeah. save it for what it's worth. Mm. Know when to stop when you're ahead. And uh, just kind of call it quits before things really do fizzle out. But there's been times where it's just like, you know, that, that guy's a bad egg. I I will, I don't care about burning that specific bridge because I, I know I'm never going to get, I have enough life experience now that I can recognize somebody like that and say that person's toxic, man. For sure. And they've just always been that way. And yeah, I'm, I'm talking about somebody who's like 50, 60 years old mm. that has always been that way. And I know all his background because I know all his acquaintances and they all say the same thing, same old story since he was 20 years old. All right. That guy, uh, I don't care to have future dealings with. Yeah. I don't care. But when you when I count them out, out of the hundreds and thousands of people I know, it's really like, like three or four, man. Maybe even two. Mm. It, you'll really know who that person is. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. But for the most part, yeah, relationships are going to keep you going. They're going to, even if they might rub you the wrong way in that point in time, you never know. They might have an experience that might change them. And if you were cool with them and you were patient with them and they maybe had a change of heart, you never know. You you might be surprised to know that they apologize to you for anything that happened years ago. And now you have a really good connection with that person and that person might appreciate you. You just never know. Yeah. Even if you don't have like, let's say of the best terms with somebody like they might come you you might be in a in a crappy situation where you need you know some help i mean as long as you don't burn that bridge yeah. it's like hey bro look i know that you can help me in this aspect you know can you help me out i mean we can simplify it and be like let's say my faucet breaks right and i knew a friend that knows plumbing you know what i mean if i have that bridge there it's like oh let me call it my friend yeah. but speaking in in a, in a mental perspective you can do that yeah too. yeah for sure I mean, almost anything so. yeah but yeah i think that's gonna wrap it up for today's show we've had a pretty lengthy show about an hour and 15 minutes uh do you want to plug anything in um, we leave? yeah i mean i i hate i hate to like you know, put, push anything out there. No, right? the here we go. <laughs> got another scammer. Over there. <laughs> Nobody's seen that episode. No, you I keep know. talking okay. like. Okay, well, okay. 
Then I we have a scammer here. <laughs> no, definitely not. And Sign up for my entrepreneurship program. Uh, <laughs> uh, but triangle. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the shape. Right. Like, like this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Don't do it. Yeah, for sure. But uh, the podcast, uh, Ready, Set, Next, uh, I'll be doing episodes really, really soon. I- I'm recording already. And then I'm also helping another friend. Uh, their podcast is Party of Three. Party of Three. Yeah, and that one is the one I'm excited for because that's the one I've made the most progress on. Yeah. Um, his show was what do really what do women really want? We talked a little bit about yeah, it the yeah. other day, and so I thought, man, that's so different from everything I've yeah. done. It's not motivational. It's not business. It's nothing. It's just casual fun. And I thought, dude, that would be awesome to jump on. For that sure. Where great. where can people find this? Do you have? Uh, I'm gonna be using Anchor. So I don't okay. know if you guys are familiar. The, the last guy was using Anchor too. Yeah. We need to hop on the Anchor. Anchor is the platform that will distribute your media on all platforms. I'm using Libsyn right now, but I probably need to hop on Anchor. Anchor will, will do it on all of them. So Spotify, Google Play, um, Apple Podcasts, um, whatever it is, wherever you find podcasts, it'll be on there. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Am I reading you to do that? Um, but do you have a YouTube channel or no, no, no. website? Nothing? Uh, no, just uh, hit me up on Facebook, man. Uh, you can put my link down on the bottom. Yeah, for your sure. Address. Yeah, my address. address. <laughs> on top of your address. My, my URL address. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on top of Anchor, is, there, is that a link? Or, um, or because you said you distributed to Spotify. I to Spotify, yeah. So they so can find you on Spotify. Just type in the name, Ready, Set, Next, okay. or Party of Three, and um, it'll be on there. Link will be down in the description below, as always. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for watching this far if you have. And if you have watched this far, then pretty sure you enjoyed the conversation. So if you can, smash that subscribe button, like, and share with at least one person if you feel that this was uh, useful for you. But anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us. Justin, you have anything to say? Um, Baby goats are cool. Also... To the Pisces out there, I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) And that's That's all. Yeah, that's it. That's going to wrap it up. We'll see you all next time. All right. Later, guys.